Welcome to Life in Biology, I'm Dr. Joel Graff, and today we're going to be talking about bacteriophages, which are viruses that infect bacteria. So in the labs here at Montana Tech, we've been working on uh, finding bacteriophage in environmental samples or in potting soil samples. Um, and we're starting to get a number of bacteriophage uh, showing up in the form of plaques on uh, plaque assay plates. Uh, now that we've got some viruses popping up, what we need to do is we need to try to purify that virus. And by purifying, I mean that you need to be able to separate out each virus, or separate the viruses out so that um, you've diluted them to the point where a, a, a single plaque that forms on your plate came from a single uh, bacteriophage and there's a couple different options for doing this so uh, we mostly follow the Howard Hughes Medical Institute Seaphages program um, and in that program they recommend doing uh, plaque assays to purify so you uh, however um, at Montana Tech for years and years people have been using something called a streak plate to purify their virus and so I want to just take a second to compare and contrast these two different um, options for trying to get a, a pure plaque. So on the left here we've got a streak plate and on the right you have a plaque assay. In the left what you do is you start out with bottom auger and you take a pipette tip, touch it to a plaque or dip it in your phage buffer that contains virus and then you start um, dragging the tip of the needle ever so lightly against the uh, surface of the bottom auger. You start out towards the end and then you work your way towards the middle. And then you get a new tip and then you drag it through that area where there's probably a lot of virus and you then uh, drag it through a little bit of that area and then streak it out and you're trying to make a one long continuous non-overlapping uh, line that you're dragging out and so the idea is that you should drop off quite a few viruses as you begin and then you turn your plate and you do the last segment I guess you'd turn it something like this and then you do that last segment and you would drag out a, a line even longer and the idea is is that the the bacteriophage plaques are going to be too close together down in this area um, to to pick an ice a well isolated pl uh, plaque. It's a little bit better in this area, and depending on how many you pick up here, maybe it's this area that you're going to find your plaque that you're going to pick, and then. Um, then maybe by the time you get to the third section of your plate you've drug your tip long enough that you've got to the point where just a single virus is dropping off fairly infrequently in that section and so the the brown indicates this that where I have have drug the uh, pipette over the plate and the black indicates that after I put all that scraping on the, or did all the scraping on the bottom auger, I put an overlay of top auger that has the uh, Mycobacteria smegmatis, our host bacteria in it, and uh, you put that over the top of the bottom auger, you throw it in the incubator, and you wait for plaques to form, and each of those black dots represents an individual plaque. Okay, so that's one way of trying to isolate a single bacteriophage. The other way is to set up multiple plates. Here I drew four just because it fit, but you might need to set up more plates than this. Um, <clears throat> a lot of people that have plaques right now, they have um, on the 10 to the minus zero, uh, on our spot test from last week, we had 10 to the minus zero, 10 to the minus 1, minus 2, minus 3 all had plenty of plaques on it so here I'm picking up at 10 to the minus 4 so you take your original sample that we saved dilute it out to 10 to the minus 4 and then continue doing 10 fold dilutions all the way to 10 to the minus 7 and in this case you get plenty of plaques on your 10 to the minus 4 plate uh, a few fewer on your 10 to the 5th 
10 to the 6th, 10 to the 7th. So how these plates worked is you had your bottom auger and then you set that aside, you mixed your top auger with bacteria that had been infected for 10, 15 minutes, whatever protocol says, um, with with the bacteria phage so that you're, you're mixing the top auger with infected bacteria. And so that by the time you do this, uh, by the time those bacteria kind of grow, um, each of these plaques represented by a dot uh, represents a, a, an infected bacteria at the time that you did your, your um, uh, dilution scheme. So in, um, in this case, the plaque assay, what you'd want to be interested in is the year 10 to the minus 7th plate because there's only a couple of, sorry I can't, uh, only a couple plaques on that, so you could pick a very well isolated plate. So there's pros and cons to these two different forms. Um, the uh, positive for this one is there's one plate here versus multiple plates in your plaque assay uh, method. So you use fewer materials to do a streak plate. Um, and then another uh, another good thing about that is it's less work, so less less time and um, there's fewer steps and all. Uh, the, the, the potential problem with this where the plaque assay is better is that if you are if you see a nice dilution like this in your, in your uh, series of, of when you did the plaque assays you can be relatively confident that each of these is going to be uh, a a single bacteria that was infected and that you don't have two infected bacteria that managed to end up very close together in that top auger. And so um, you you have more confidence with this method that you get it, you're you getting a, a completely isolated plaque and it just started from one virus and that that's a completely clonal population. So all the virus in that plaque came from one virus to begin with. Whereas over here, it's possible that even though this is well isolated, it's possible that um, you, you turned your tip a little bit or whatever as you're dragging it through that last bit and maybe two, two three, four, maybe ten viruses dropped off your pipette tip at this point and, and caused a plaque. And so here you're, you're only semi-confident that you have um, isolated uh, a clonal population of a virus. Here you're far more confident. Um, and so what we're going to do uh, in, in class is that we're going to do a streak plate this week with, with people that have viruses, uh, bacteriophage, from the spot test last week. And then um, after you uh, do one round of purification with the streak plate, we're going to then learn how to do the round of purification doing the plaque assay. So the first one's easier, get done quicker. Second one is going to be making sure that we're getting a, a clonal population because you don't want to have two different types of viruses when we go on to uh, analyze the uh, Gene, uh, gene, you know, if we go to sequence the genome or do our restriction digests or take pictures of the bacteriophage on the electron microscope, we want it all to be a clonal population so that you are naming a very specific virus that you found. Okay, so the uh, quiz this week is going to be comparing and contrasting streak plates and plaque assays. So, uh, good luck on your quiz. And let me see if I can find the stop button. All right, I think I found it. I'll see you in lab.